Welcome to this week. Uh, I'm Freedom One. This is HearingGod.TV. It's our weekly um, prayer and intercession time. Thanks. First for off, that. I'd like to dig in the Word a bit because this lifestyle of always praying is, uh, as we end the age all about getting your wedding garment ready. And I also run a forum at www.HearingGod.ProBoards.com and on that forum uh, we have a, kind of a community going on, and we something up, and I'm praying, and all of a sudden they're like, "Ooh, it's it's warm." <laughs> yes. thank you. I felt the power of the Holy Spirit before I prayed for a friend once, and we just ask that you would just flood in after the gift of tongues comes interpretation. Jesus took bread. Your youth does not disqualify you whatsoever. Jesus said that we are to do things greater than he did. So, and what about the people? Does anyone care about the souls involved here? But you must first humble yourself to reveal his glory. We all need to examine and contemplate. Oh, we have to know through the word. We are the full package. So, hey, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank and praise you. I'm Freedom One of Hearing God. Andy shares a praise report. Um, a person that he knew um, had a stomach ache for four days. I prayed for her on Thursday, and the Lord healed her. Awesome. Um, that was Pavla, and and uh, one of the youth in his uh, youth group. Um, she is going to preach at the youth group today, and he says that she's on fire for God. Uh, amen. <laughs> that is really so awesome, and actually, um. I kind of throw things together for what what um, I feel the Lord's impressed upon me during the week, but I really never know how things are going to flow. <laughs> and this actually starts the flow for me um, because with the youth, uh, it immediately brings uh, to mind a dream that I had this week. I, I kind of got pig piled and I wanted to share I wanted to share with you um, because sometimes it's so easy um, to not really be able to see how things can compound and then you end up in a mess um, but I was able to kind of you know the Lord was saying hey look and share it so I wanted to I'll, I'll start even back further as he's showing me to um, there was a time during the week where a friend wrote to me and as I'm reading what he's writing it's like the Holy Spirit is downloading stuff that is not um, it's not do this do that but it's like strategy and it's not like um, like do this to get that he's just sharing um, what to do and the problem was is I would I wanted to write it before I went to town because I didn't know how long I was going to be gone. I was going to be going here, here, you know. And the problem was his husband was ready to go now. So I like when I write stuff I like to articulate and be sure that I'm really clear. Excuse me. And so I am uh trying to burn rubber on this email and the husband is standing right there waiting and I I don't I don't want to you know meddle in our plans for the day so I just shoot off the email and uh, then later on I, I get to the bank and I'm able to get a little Wi-Fi at the bank and then I'm like, ah, you know, because everything's begun to build. And, and I'll share what happened was when I'm sitting here, 
I I don't want to disrespect my husband. <laughs> so I'm I'm trying to write quickly, and a spirit of guilt came in and started condemning me, and it was making it really hard for me to write this letter because I'm trying to write it to give this strategy, and the guilt is there. Okay, and so the guilt, and then. Because I'm hearing all this noise in my head, I have inadequacy rising in me, okay? The enemy is also throwing at me all this other stuff. And so finally I shoot the email off, I'm at the bank, and then I feel like that stuff is built, built, built. And so then I write, write that person again and I, and I explain, you know, I don't mean to sound condescending because, you know, like I'm telling somebody how to pray to Jesus, you know. But anyhow, that's, that's how, how the filter of the enemy was hammering me so much how I ended up saying that. And so later after all of our travels and I get home, my friend says, no, I don't see it that way at all. And you know, well, you know, he, he's, he's beyond that point, okay? And then I'm like, ugh, you know, I just realized what a sucker day that I had where the enemy slipped in there. And then even beyond that, that inadequacy and stuff would continue to hammer me uh, because, you know, and even before the broadcast here, stuff like it's, it, it's hard because there's warfare in getting ready, but at the same time, I just need to not care, okay? I need to place it in the Lord's hands, but I just wanted to share that's how that pig piling thing goes, and it's just so easy to um, align with the condemnation or the guilt or, or whatever it is, and then the truck just runs you over, okay? But I appreciate my friend, you know, telling me, you know, no, no, I don't see a condescending in it at all, which I should know that. But, you know, the whole rush thing threw me off. And so um, the enemy will justify, oh, well, you need to explain that, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's just one thing after another. Um, but... Uh, the other thing um, was that as I was suffering from this attack of inadequacy and everything, and just, I'm like, what am I doing? And uh, another person, you know, I, the mystical body of Christ always shows up, okay? I never get a moment to well in anything <laughs> because the body of Christ is always there to keep me on track. Um, another friend in the Lord writes me and says the fire of God is on your life and you know <laughs> that was so at odds with everything I was seeing in the natural everything I was feeling do I feel like that no at not at all but I had to thank that person because the Lord the Lord had to smack me out of it okay and I had to align and agree with his truth yes the fire of God is on my life amen so I have to choose what I'm going to believe whom this day will I serve so um, I I told this person hey I just had this dream last night and thank you for, for writing that and being obedient and smacking me out of it because I needed it. Um, okay, the dream was I was in this area where there's water. And I look over here and I see a white baby elephant swimming in the water. Behind him are two bigger normal colored elephants. I turn my eyes and I'm walking around this bed. 
The stream will make sense in a minute here. I'll explain it. <laughs> then, as I look back over, the baby elephant's here and is white, and the two other ones are now white. Okay. And in a nutshell, um, the whole thing about the youth, okay? The youth are on fire. Um, the Lord, you know, I... I talk about you know not to disqualify anything and it really doesn't matter at what level that you are spiritually because sometimes we know that those that have been doing it for a long time can go off track I just shared with you how, how this past week how I got the pig piling that was my own fault and how easy it would have been for me to dwell in that for a while but he lifts me up through the body of Christ and so um, you know we cannot discount those young ones that are coming up so this baby elephant is white and what is white He's seeking holiness purity okay I look to the other side and I'm walking around this bed a bed Kind of a symbol of covenant, um, you know. And I couldn't help but the moment that I translated that, I was thinking about the forum, which, by the way, is at hearinggod.proboards.com. Excuse me. Uh, and um, you know, just that that whole tight knit group. Now let's go a little deeper into elephant symbolism. Elephants are wet. They're really thick-skinned, almost as, as as if an armor, right? Um, they're also very intelligent, and they're very powerful. And so, when I turned from this, from be, walking around this bed, and looked the other way, all of them were white. And so, uh, it was just a very encouraging thing. Um, you know, being in, in covenant with this group that is willing to build, not to look at rank or size or whatever, but that um, it's this this growth thing. So I just um, thank you, Jesus, for this um, testimony, you know, regarding the, uh, the youth stuff because um, it's so awesome. Just in general, I just want to pray for the youth. So, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. Brenda, come for your hand that touches the youth. For their hearts that are crying out for you, Lord God. You are their future, and you are their hope, and they cling to you. I just ask that you would just flood out your Holy Spirit upon the youth, Lord Jesus, in these last days. Bremen, that you would just spark that fire upon their tongues. That they would submit all and humble all to your foot, so Lord Jesus. Lord God, I just ask that you would just send forth your angels to surround them, to encourage them in their walk of purity. In holiness, in righteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Andy had prayed for uh, a, a woman called Saha, who is an Iranian who claims to be a Christian and is awaiting an. Asylum decision. Uh, I felt that there were other issues uh, as well. 
and uh, you know, just uh, praying for peace for her. So, Lord God, we just lift up Saha to you, Lord Jesus. I thank and praise you, Lord God, that you uphold your own. Those that call upon your name are saved, Lord Jesus. We just declare that all things go well with her. We just uh, agree with fairness over this asylum decision. That you hide her beneath your shadow, Lord Jesus, beneath the shadow of the Almighty, Lord God, that you would just shield her and protect her, and be still her heart, Lord God. You grant her that peace, Lord Jesus. Give her that peace, Jesus. During this time, Lord God, we just ask that it would just draw her even closer to you and to your word, to the promises of your truth, Lord Jesus. She came back and may she cling to that in all confidence in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Praise you, Jesus. Whew. All right, uh, Miss Lynn asks um, for prayer for her husband. Um, she says that he's too much in the world. Um, and she's asking for prayer uh, that we, he would come back to the Lord and read his words. Uh, amen. Yeah, we know that, that where faith is found, uh, is is it's birthed by reading the word. So we we just pray for him, Lord God, that uh, she can be an upstanding wife, an example, with no pressure, with no condemnation behind it, but just with your love. It's, it's your love will just emanate from her. And from her example, Lord God, we know that you you work all things to the good of those that love you, and that the the prayers of the righteous avail much. And so, thank you, Lord Jesus. We just join with Lynn on praying for her husband, and we we just thank you, Lord God. Brother, we ask that you would just send forth your angels in his life. In everything, uh, in, in the news or anything he comes across, that it would bring him to the realization of, of the real big choices that we need to make in life. That one day we die, and when we die, where do we go? Lord God, I just, I just pray for that experience. experience be fresh upon his heart, upon his mind, to do question everything. I ask, Lord God, that you would send forth your laborers into the harvest to plant those good seeds, to plant those seeds, to give him that hunger to look for you. I praise you, Jesus. Amen. <coughs> Okay, and, uh, you know, we're talking about the youth. Um, I was very happy. Um, one of my spiritual kids on YouTube, um, there's a few I've had, you know, like going from high school and then graduating high school, and, and you know, it's been kind of cool. They call me mom and stuff. And so um, one of them named Paul um, let me know the other day that, uh, He'd been accepted to college for computer programming, so uh, I that just kind of made me smile. So um, you know, along with that, you know, it's exciting to see them go onward and upward. But I too remember um, the pressures in college, 
and you know when you come out from under mom and dad's wing uh, it can be so intense um, there's just no barrier and so Lord God we just uh, pray we've prayed for the youth but we especially pray for those that will be leaving the nest those that have been raised in your truth Lord God we just pray for them Lord God that you indeed keep them and shelter them and give that the, that that wonderful discernment that they will not follow the crowd but that your still fall, small voice rise up and vibrate within them in those crucial moments where they must choose A or B. One is life and the other is death. Lord God, I thank and praise you, Lord God, that you say choose life that we may live. And we just declare uh, your your spirit to just burn within them, Robocoba, that they may choose. They choose that life. They choose to stand for you, Lord God. Brobaka, stir up that boldness within them. Brebaka, even boldness to begin to start campus Bible studies and to do things. Brobaka, to walk in your truth, Lord God, amidst the darkness. I thank and praise you, Lord God, that you will begin to bring these believers together and that they will know that they will know that it is you that brought them together in conversation and word that your spirit rise up and they, they slip out that, that they belong to you and then they surprise each other that, hey, I am too, and that by that commonality, that fire began to, to, to burn throughout campuses everywhere. I thank you, Lord God, that amidst the disasters and, and things that happen, that, that that forces people to confront such issues. I thank you, Lord God, amidst all these things, that your truth comes forth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Okay. It's kind of a roundabout way, but kind of touching on a little bit on deliverance issues of sorts. And what I wanted to say was, um, I kind of got in this conversation with a friend this week. Um, it's actually actually build the farm, and he kind of gave a little bit of testimony. And I said, "Well, I got to share this because I have other stuff to add to it." It just really sparked a thing. Um, he he said um, he, he shared a dream that he had on the forum about competitive management okay I don't know if, if any of you read that or not but um, he said since my dream about competitive man management the office has changed a lot uh, I've been praying humility and I can't actually remember the other words it's been a few weeks but basically the opposites of what he picked up on in the office Okay, uh, strife and control. Uh, he began to pray those opposites uh, prophetically. You know, there's, there's scriptures that you can tie into that. You, that's the key. You do it through the word of truth, the opposites, okay? And so he's speaking those things over the place, and here's his testimony. And now so many people have left that all of the bosses are having, having to drive trucks every day just to have enough drivers. Sales staff and warehouse have been leaving in droves too. And uh, the thing is, is he just, he just got a job at another company. But this is something that he began to do. 
and the atmosphere began to change. And our initial reaction is um, when something is bad, is our reaction is, is to rain down judgment, to call this and that, uh, you know. <laughs> but I want to share this with you. Um, doing it this way and it, how he shared, because when I share on in my uh, spiritual house cleaning series, when I get to the part of deliverance. Um, when I was mentoring with a person and they were leading me through deliverance, this is something that I came up with on my own. This isn't something they suggested. They suggested it in other applications, but I actually used it in deliverance. Um, and it works. <laughs> uh, the impartation wedge is what I named it. Okay, excerpt this from that video. I, I said, and since I mentioned that we have the authority to bind and we have the same to loose, remember how I encouraged you to use the sword of the word to loosen the soil by focusing on those scriptures that align with the truth of God. After having bound the enemy, we then declare and loose effectively imparting those one word opposite antonyms of who you are in Christ Jesus. And of course, you can also take those scriptures and impart those as well. So I didn't get that from some method or anything. It's just something I was impressed to do as I was doing deliverance and as I was struggling because some things did not want to leave. I found that as I was impressed to do it, um, it force those things out as I begin to prophetically call those those positive things in the other things popped out okay and I want to share the principle of it it's because of if you speak life that you may live kind of scripture okay um, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. So again, everything in the, the Old Testament was judgment this and judgment that and, and everything. That is still going to happen, but it's reserved only for the Father. It's going to happen at a later date. But what we can do is to declare that life, okay? And so my whole wraparound of, of this is that doing this on a bigger scale like Build the Farm did, okay? That's essentially what he did is he took that and did it territorially and things changed in the natural. So I want to encourage those of you out there that um, are in a hostile environment to pinpoint, to nail what those things are that are attacking you and to begin to use that impartation wedge kind of mentality and to speak blessing and to speak that life of those positive things where you are and just watch for for the power to come okay um, and like I said it's really I, I, your initial reaction is is that judgment and stuff and I can tell you during witchcraft and kicking things out you do have to judge things and make those things beneath his footstool that is true but um, there's times and places for for this and uh, that speaking life um, is awesome so um, okay I 
I feel led to depart from that because I could continue, um, but I think I'm going to continue along that at a later time. Let's let's pray for Obama. And and I do have, you know, that's one of my topics. Um, is um, he began to encourage Israel about giving up land and whatnot. And the biggest thing I, I noticed was that um, people picking up on that he's playing both sides of the fence. It's like he's talking with Israel, and it's buddy, buddy, buddy. And then he says all this other stuff, even though the Palestinians are throwing things at him and rockets and whatnot. Um, he's still kind of playing that side of the fence, too. So... Um, <laughs> so let me get back on track here. We will just pray for President Obama. Lord God, I thank and praise you, Lord God. That all things must happen according to your perfect will. We pray your hand upon President Obama for your hand to be over dispel that darkness Lord Jesus that he may choose life we just speak blessing in a heart of peace. We just ask Lord Jesus for your healing on his heart. That you would heal him of the bitterness. For many words have come as arrows shot to his heart. Soften him, O oh Lord God, especially in this season of celebrating your resurrection. But that he focus on the big things, on the big things, Lord Jesus. Illuminate him to your truth and your word, Lord Jesus. And surround him with your, your warring angels. We also pray for his family. And just ask Lord Jesus that you would just speak to his children's heart. Rebecca and his wife. That you speak through the babes, Lord Jesus. You who send forth your dreams and your visions in these last days. So I ask, Lord Jesus, that you, uh, Rebecca, would open up avenues to speak to the president your truth, even through his children, even through his wife. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, and just pray your blessing over him. Amen. I was going to um, pray for Israel next because it's it's natural, isn't it? Um, and then we'll pray about the the other other prayer requests here in a second. So, Lord God, we just thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for your people, Israel, your chosen. We thank and praise you, Lord God, uh, for your uh, upcoming feast day, the spring feast, that during this Passover, that many uh, uh, Jewish people who love and serve you, Lord God, may 
have the revelation of what Jesus really is, what the fulfillment of your holy word, Lord God. I thank you for dreams and visions in the night. I thank you, Lord God, that their hearts churn to know what the what the scriptures say. And despite uh, a lifetime of being told to stay away from it, that they will see for themselves. Like that Sid Roth uh, book, they they read it for themselves or whatever that book was that he wrote. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus, that they will see it for themselves, that they will test your word, and that they will consider all things and choose that which is good. I thank you, Lord God, that you are so good. And we speak and pour forth your blessings upon Israel. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for our, our older brother. <laughs> and I thank you, Lord God, that you desire all to come to the knowledge of salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. And I, and I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, yeah, the whole Catholic denomination thing. And, you know, I was Catholic and everything. And, and uh, it, it is pretty awesome what uh, the new Pope, some of the things that he's said. Um, you know, and I'm not being all pro-Catholic or whatever. I just look at, you know, what, what people say and what people do. And if you have a track record, you know, God can reach in through anything, okay? Um, he did quite a lot of speaking to me while I was still in the Catholic Church, and I was poised to remain there to help set people free. But the Lord is the one that actually took me out of it. Um, you know, and I can love the people everywhere and whatever denomination they're in. It's just the the fruit is by or the truth is is by the fruits that you shall know them. So I thank and praise you, Lord God. Um, there are many hindrances everywhere, um, but we'll just say a prayer. Uh, just pray. Um, we just thank you, Lord God, for everything that's going on, and we just we just bless this. Um, I guess he's taken the name Francis, so we just ask for your blessing that uh, that uh, in his uh, being a man of God, that uh, people will look to you, Jesus, you alone. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Not uh, anything else, but but you alone. That's that's the real key, is that we point the way to Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. I just ask for your blessings upon uh, Pope Francis and and whatever. Whatever is going on, Lord Jesus, we just place it in your hands because I know there's so much going on. That we just declare that we trust in you, Lord Jesus. We trust in you, Lord God. Alright, well I'm going to come back to some more, um, you know, I, I said I had some stuff to talk about, you know, regarding Obama and whatever. <coughs> Um, praise you, Jesus. Um, I want to get back to the prayer requests I have on the on the forum here. Um, I have prayer requests for a gal that's going through a rental legal battle. Basically, the property manager is basically throwing her under the bus, and you know, and that's kind of what evil does. Um, as if injury isn't enough. There's that insult and uh, discrediting, and it hurts, doesn't it? Um, so just trying to make, run her under the bus, make her look bad. Um, but the truth is, is that whatever kind of distractions that the enemy can do, 
um, it's very clear that she's been stolen from, okay? And she's in the right. So we just pray for her, Lord God, to having done all things to therefore stand. We speak blessing on her behalf. We declare that your righteousness triumphs, Lord God, mighty God. Oh, we praise and worship you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that even going through this is strengthening her. She's being like one of those white elephants. Her skin is toughened. Those arrows just fall off. They do not penetrate. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for my sister. I thank you, Lord God. And I declare exposure on the enemy's behalf that all things will be brought to light. That anyone defrauded, even in this whole rental complex, if it even goes beyond her, that it be exposed in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, that your righteousness prevail. Amen. So, amen. All right. Let's pray for Mike and Leslie, who are currently in a certain country. Uh, they're obviously about their father's work, and I don't know if they're missionaries or whatever, but um, I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. That anyone about your father's work, Lord Jesus, we just extend that covering over uh, Mike and Leslie. We declare your hand of covering over them, Lord Jesus. Your hand to uphold them in all things, Lord Jesus. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would give them those strategies on what the territorial voices are that blind the people. The people that are blinded, that they're, they're crying out, that you would just impart your prophetic revelation to Mike and Leslie on how that they can proceed, how that they, they can uh, call on, on that attribute of you, Lord God, to demolish the enemy so that the people can begin to hear your voice, Lord Jesus. I thank and praise you, Lord God. Your angels go forth and soften the hearts of all the people, all the people surrounding, Lord God, that you are dealing with them, Lord Jesus. We just cover them in your love, Lord Jesus. We cover them in your love. I thank you, Lord God, that you give them the strength to carry on each and every day. Grow their number, Lord God. Grow their tent pegs, Lord God. And all that you've entrusted them to, we speak growth and blessing. Amen. Which, by the way, I did want to let everyone know that I will not be doing a broadcast next week. Um... Because my kids are going to be on spring break, and I'm just taking a break. <laughs> um, if someone else would want to do a broadcast in my place, let me know. Contact me. And if I know you well enough, I might say yes. <laughs> okay, Ginger has a prayer request. She said that they are expecting heavy snow. They need to run errands today. Um, they're asking that we would keep their family in prayer. As you recall, um, they had a recent death in the family uh, of suicide, so it wasn't pretty. Um, a grandfather. Um, so they're healing over that and being a light to the rest of the family. Um, so, you know, it's, just a, it's a lot. <laughs> so uh, she also mentioned to me that she just felt a lot, uh, you know, Stuff, even between the husband and her, um, silly stuff, you know, like begin to fight, and then they 
stand back and laugh about it because they recognize it's the enemy is brewing something. So um, she noticed a lot of that, and she was even considering, hey, maybe it's because of the whole Obama and Israel thing. So uh, true, could be. Um, but anyhow, back to uh, she's asking for prayer, that they keep their armor on, uh, for wisdom, for strength, for peace, clarity, and revelation. Uh, so, amen. And we'll just impart that into you right now in the name of Jesus. Anyone else that wants it, receive it for yourself. Lord God, I thank and praise you. Rubike for your armor. Bramba king kuna bakara bakora bakira bara baka bara sike bara baka. Rubike bara ba. I thank you, Lord God. Rubike bara baka bara baka. That you speak. Bramba kabara bake. Your children that receive your truth operate in wisdom. Nimena tiki na baka. We receive that wisdom, and I thank you, Lord God, that we operate in strength. In strength because we hold it over to you. We place our burdens on the altar. We place all things before you, Lord Jesus. And you, in turn, give us that strength because we don't have to carry that burden. So, Lord God, we just impart that strength, that mighty power, that your Holy Spirit floods us with your perfect strength. And we declare peace. We declare that our feet are shod with peace. That wherever we walk, we are not spreading strife, but we are emanating peace because of our deep trust in you. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. And I want to share this little tidbit um, because it's flowing. Uh, this is something I put up on the forum this week. And I mentioned God has been teaching me some little things, even today, to prepare to trust Him at all costs. It was like the Lord was saying to me, I will, I will provide what you need when you need it. Do you trust me? So I said, I know I want to be all ready. You know, I want to be prepared and see all everything all aligned. You know, I, I want that before each broadcast, and it's, <laughs> it doesn't line up. You know, I, I end up with a lot of kind of turmoil, but. I just have to say, I, I okay. It's okay. It's okay that if it's a mess, it's okay. So um, I want that alignment. I want to see everything all in place now. Okay, but he doesn't want my peace to flow from that. Okay, that's that self security. That's the I can do it. I've lined it all up. I've planned it all out kind of mentality. He doesn't want our peace to flow from that. He wants me completely in his peace. In his peace, I can't see all the things I don't have or how ready or not I am. All I see is him. And every time I, you know, when I talk about this or I see this, I, I actually have a vision in my mind. I see myself cuddled up like a like a little embryo almost in his hand like a little infant like he's holding me that's what it, that's what what his kind of peace that he wants us to know so i want to share that because it was just it was awesome for me and i know it, it blessed some other people too so um amen on that and she was also asking for clarity and revelation. So, indeed, we do uh, declare your clarity, Holy Spirit. Breve kimara baka in your revelation, Lord Jesus. Memere tikine baka, brabaka baka. 
we just ask for your hand of discernment upon our lives that those that are going to and fro that we can discern that we can discern when a thing is in our lap that you place there versus something with a root of fear or worry or distrust that all those things that oppose your perfect peace fall that they fall I thank you Lord God that you keep us in your perfect discernment in your perfect truth Amen. okay and another little thing that, that Ginger was asking for um, she has a friend who is on the wrong path so let's pray for the lost again okay or those that are they're on that fence and these are the days right now where the black and white you're either black or white hot or cold and even those ones that have fallen on the wrong side they still have time to get back up and hop over okay but what they really need is good friends good family members uh, those with that heart of love love hopes all things believes all things bears all things hope never fails so we just thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord God for those people that you've placed in our lives that need you as their hope Lord Jesus we place them in your lap Lord Jesus and we just ask you to be a part of their life that you would just send forth your angels and your witnesses to be there in their life to plant those seeds and to call them into the way of righteousness and truth I thank you Lord God that our prayers avail so much thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord God even those in prison even those in, on, in drugs and, and in the, the deepest depths of sin Lord God that you lift them up Lord God I thank you Lord Jesus that you use us that you use us to set those captives free oh Lord Jesus we place them in your lap uh, I, I don't have a cold but thanks for asking um, when I was so razzled earlier um, you know <laughs> made my sinuses and everything run a little but um, I have this thing with my ear um, a lot of times when when I'm under a lot of attack um, it's like my ear pops and um, I, I don't know how to describe it but I just have learned despite it um, because it's just like the enemy would use it to distract me and to keep me off focus um, I just press on and so if I sound weird or whatever in here I'm good <laughs> But um, let's pray. I mean, if 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 this uh, thing can go away forever, that'd be that'd be sweet. Uh, that I don't declare it's just only a, an attack. But if uh, he would have a healing over it, heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. O Lord God, I just submit this ear to you. I thank you for the prayers of your people. I thank you, Lord God. We call on your healing power over this ear right now in the mighty name of Jesus. That that flap open and shut as it's supposed to. That is station two come into line with your perfect word, Lord God. That you heal them all. Just ask that your Holy Spirit would reach in there and touch that. Sorry, it feels weird. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It's getting better, guys. It's getting better. Okay, well, I'll let you continue to pray. 
over that on your own time or whatever. Um, Salt and Light is asking uh, for prayer to continue to draw closer to trust, allow God to guide and mold her according to his will. And that her faith will increase for his supernatural power and in, in her circumstances. So, amen. And as, as always, if you want it, you can have it. You just have to agree with it. <laughs> because we are the king's kids. So, let's declare. Um, we trust in the Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you bless us with even supernatural trust, with even supernatural faith beyond, beyond what we can even understand right now, that it is available, that it is available, that nothing, even a blank black wall, that you paint that cam canvas before us, Lord Jesus, and you make a way when there is no way. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for salt and light. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you continue to work out all of the circumstances that she's going through. Lord Jesus, for your victory. And continue to ask for your favor. That you go before her, Lord God. You go before her and you are her rear guard. That you protect her as if uh, an invisible shield surrounds her from those flaming arrows. We just command all attacks of the enemy down, void and powerless, especially those negative words. Void and powerless, they fall to the ground in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless my sister. Rebecca can increase her faith. Amen. All right. Um, Andy is asking, does anyone have a problem with, with left toes or a foot? He got a word from the Lord earlier today. Does anyone have that? So because he got that he got that word, um, we're gonna pray, okay? We will pray for healing in toes and feet in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, Lord God, that your fire would go forth, your healing manifestation go forth. Thank you, Lord God, that you, yield, you heal from the inside out, from the inside out, that you realign that structure, and that you regenerate those cells. Call forth your mighty hand upon those feet or those toes, Lord Jesus. All right, when I was praying, <laughs> it was a really weird vision. I could see the inside, and it was almost like the inside, and I could see all these little suction cup-looking things moving like, um, like I said, regenerating, or I, I really don't know how to describe it, but I just know that the Lord is is doing something there. So um, if you have a, a feet or toe issue, claim that. Begin to speak life into that. Lord God, if it be from any trauma, uh, any accident or anything, Lord Jesus, we just place you. Rebecca, when that accident happened, we just place you there, Lord Jesus. Mighty healer go forth, even from the first moments that it began. We declare your victory, Lord Jesus. 
We repent of any anything that uh, any negative thoughts we've had regarding our feet or toes. Any negative alignments, and we just declare, no, you are the healer, and you healed them all. Let's cling to that in the mighty name of Jesus. All right. Awesome. It'd be cool to hear. If you got a testimonial on that, even during the week, um, you can go to hearinggod.proboards.com, and I have a praise report section. So if you get a praise on that, let us know. Um, you don't even have to register if you don't want to. You can you can uh, write it as a guest, completely anonymously if you want to. Okay. Ginger had mentioned that they were expecting heavy snow, so they needed to run errands and such. So I wanted to say, and speaking of heavy snow, uh, you know, Obama in Israel, in encouraging the notion again of giving up land. Um, if you Google disaster for those that touch Israel, you will see a whole slew of, is it coincidental events <laughs> of speaking, you know, getting stuff in the motion and talking about dividing the land and then other things where treaties are signed or, or anything, any motions in that direction, you will see that um, destruction comes. So, you know, let's look at what's brewing since these him saying that. What is brewing? This storm. This huge mid to eastern storm is coming. And, you know, you're hearing five and six inches here and, and whatever. And, and not only that, but it's also the mid southern clear across states as well. Same thing. It's like this huge wave from this certain point, whoosh, all the way over. So that is going to cause major turmoil with tornado fuel, right? Um, where it's a little warmer. Whatever this thing is that's moving down um, is, is brewing this terrible stuff. And so... Are you asking, hey, is this just coincidence or is it a repeating pattern? Uh, because we know of the scripture, he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. So let me, let me read this scripture, but let me read it a few verses up, okay? And see if you notice anything. I thought this was interesting because I looked up that scripture today. And I always like to look what's around it. So in Zechariah, I will start at verse, uh, Zechariah 2, verse 6. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, declares the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heavens, declares the Lord. Up, escape to Zion, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. And then we get to verse 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, after his glory sent me to the nations who plundered you, for he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. So pay attention. In the two verses, flee, escape. Yeah. So let me let me check over here. Y'all are talking a bunch. Um, all right. I hope you'll stay on, Robin. Um, I will do a prayer for uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit in just a moment. Um, okay. We got some posts here on articles and links and such. But I also want to say 
with that in mind, and if you if you also saw the other other news, meteor over Manhattan, East Coast fireball. So I can't help but saying, um, New York City, are you paying attention to the warning? Um, you know, when you've got solar activity and signs in the in the stars and the heavens. We have to pay attention, okay? Um, it is an omen. And I, I'd like to say it may just be showing us what will suffer judgment if splitting Israel goes beyond intent and talks, just because of the proximity, okay? Um, is there a little bit of judgment for even speaking it? And that's what these storms are. But I'm saying, seriously consider, is that, you know, that big flash over Manhattan there, is that saying something deeper? Uh, I want you to consider that. Um, and I'm only going to be bold here and say this. Um, as of previously, I've only hinted of coming destruction and withholding the name of a city, but I do feel uh, it's just been turning and turning um, as things go. Um, I did a video <clears throat> called Get in the House Warning, and uh, I wanted to try and play it, but I think I'll just put a link in the video later, um, but in it uh, I share what I heard. I heard an audible voice say, hit on and then in the video I didn't say the city name because I'm not into starting panic and whatever I really believe that those that have an ear to hear who are seeking the Holy Spirit will know all things um, he's not gonna hide things from those that love him okay but I will share what I heard was hit on New York City and you know part of the burden to share that is because you know I'm hearing it other places too and it's not like you know where it was a, a fear thing of oh am I right or whatever I heard it I just I really don't like um, when people stand and, and, and shout and start a panic. It, it, it's something that can so easily be taken in a crazy way, you know? <laughs> but um, I just want to say, you know, the signs, pay attention. Um, and, I, and I want to, um, you know, go a little further with this. You know, we just had that meteor over Russia in February, that big one. You know, I can remember I happened to be at a restaurant when, you know, it was on the news and they played it 50,000 times over and over again. So we all got to see it pretty well. Um, I just want to stress that things in the natural mirror that which is in the spiritual, okay? They really do. Um, you know, Along with the omens, we do need to consider that, you know, like Luke 10, 18, he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, okay? We actually, with seeing these events going on, we may be actually witnessing power shifts in the heavens, okay? It's the same thing with Pope, Benedict, Pope Benedict's resignation, you know, the lightning hit the dome. There are things going on in the spirit realm that those, those are ways that we'll see and know things are going on. Um, so do consider with the Russian meteor, um, the scriptures, um, you know, Ezekiel chapter 38 clearly pin pinpoints an end time military superpower which will come from the remotest parts of the north 
um, you know, everyone knows right directly above the holy place is uh, the capital of Russia. It's, it's literally perpendicularly north from Israel, as the, the scriptures say. Okay, let's look at this. All right. The prime event performed by Russia in the end times will be its military attack on Israel, as recorded in Ezekiel 38 and 39. This event takes place soon after the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period, as Ezekiel and Revelation both show. So I just wanted to show you. It's very interesting. You all know. You can all feel it. You can all see the signs. We are getting close to this signing of the seven-year Middle East peace agreement thing, and that involves the Antichrist. Well, as you see on the map here, Russia attacks Israel immediately following. So um, what I wanted to kind of um, uh, give a heads up about, you know, when I was talking about the, um, you know, the what is happening in the natural is mirroring what's going on in the spiritual. Um, could that uh, comet that streaked across Russia being shown, you know, kind of showing us the shift in the heavenlies, uh, shifting of a spiritual condition that is lining up those ducks in a row remember what Russia is going to do is like going to be the, the head of that spear and is going to bring all these other guys in to go and, and trample down or attempt to rather so um, I just wanted to share that um, we're not blind we're spiritual people these things are happening for a reason Okay, and even in the book of Revelation, when it talks about, <clears throat> you know, um, the stars coming down and this one's wormwood or whatever, um, it just, it's, it's like, there's more there. There's more there. Um, you know, wormwood, what is worm? Wormwood is another thing for calling bitterness, okay? Um, is it like a spiritual thing where, where um, you know, people become blinded and they become more bitter? You know, like the love of many grows cold. Um, so, just encouraging you to look on many levels because um, it is pretty deep. All right. Well, that's all I have for this week. So, let's go out and make a difference. <clears throat> I thank you, Lord God, that each one of us has the fire of God on our life. We receive that impartation from you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that we are above only, never beneath, that we operate in your truth, your righteousness, your discernment, that your Holy Spirit has free reign in our life. Thank you for that reminder, Jesus, because I do remember, I do remember that there was a prayer request for seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Isn't God awesome? So we just pray, anyone out there that is seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I thank you, Lord God, that Robin has been praying, fasting, has been pressing in. Uh, on a side note, I have some videos up. I have a whole playlist on my Freedom Zone 1 channel uh, with every baptism in the Holy Spirit related, speaking in tongues related, anything uh, on there. And I encourage people to go through and watch the stuff, especially the Derek Prince uh, videos, because 
um, when you ha when you when you do a study in the word, you you go through every avenue that the word says because the world is a harsh place, and it's too easy to agree with that negativity of that was that's passed away and etc. But um, that um, when you have it in the word displayed and you see that it's not passed away and that you see that the gift of the Holy Spirit coming that Jesus said when power has come on you it is that power it is that initiation into those greater works it is that promise it begins to build your faith build your faith build your faith and when when you align with his truth things come uh, much uh, like like just a mighty wind uh, of his power just rushes down so I just thank and praise you Lord God I thank you Lord Jesus Lord Jesus along with Robin we all just continue to declare Oh, we turn our lives over to you completely, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that all that you did to bridge that gap. We thank you, Lord God, that you have brought us through repentance unto new life. And so we turn ourselves over completely to you, Lord Jesus. And we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in entirety. Have your way with us, Lord Jesus. Use us as willing vessels for your good works and your good news. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you dispatch us out unto the nations. Just ask, Lord God, that you would pour forth your fire, your fire, Lord Jesus. We receive all your giftings, Lord Jesus. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. Purify us and make us clean, Lord Jesus. Draw us in to your path of holiness and righteousness as we keep our lamps lit, our oil filled as we follow and we listen for your every move. Thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. We just ask for your manifestation of your power to flow through Robin right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Be blessed. And as I said before, I uh, won't be having this next week. Um, but if anybody's interested in, in uh, doing the broadcast, I'll tell you whatever you need to know. <laughs> so, God bless you, and um, we'll see you next month. God bless. Mm -hmm.